So this is the rail trail. Uh, the rail trail is about an 11 mile system. Um, a lot of it, especially through this dense part of South End, kind of looks like this. There are parts of it where it changes facility type to more side path or even bike lanes. Um, but it extends south to past the Scaly Bark Station and north all the way up to Noda. Um, there is an economic development group um, that has a municipal service district here called Center City Partners. Um, their jurisdiction covers uptown, part of West End and South End. Um, and part of what they do is really cool placemaking projects like this. Um, and they'll program this a few times a year and uh, bring folks out with uh, live music or food. Um, someone has to try the seesaw while I'm talking up here, by the way. Have to have two. Yeah. All right. But one of the coolest things I think about the rail trail is uh, the rail trail has really become a place for creative expression in Charlotte. You will see a lot of that reflected in art along the trail and the design of the buildings. Um, Charlotte can kind of be a buttoned up town sometimes. We've got a reputation for being sort of a buttoned up banker town. Um, historically, the rail trail has been a really good way for us to kind of buck that rec reputation. And it's been a, a really cool creative outlet. And Center City Partners has played a huge role in all of that, along with the bicycle community and folks like Kevin um, and the architectural community. One of the things you've probably noticed on the rail trail is uh, the pavement type and the width varies quite a bit. The, uh, the trail, when it was first built, was actually built as an emergency access route in between the light rail stations there in South End. Um, the original planners of the light rail system did not anticipate that the rail trail would become what it is today. Uh, the newer sections of the rail trail have been built with some of those lessons in mind about how popular it has become. This is as far south as we'll go on the rail trail today. Uh, if you're interested in exploring more on your own, if, if you popped over to the other side of the rail trail back at Tremont, you could continue a long way south, several more miles on the rail trail and, and see some more of this bicycle oriented development. The reason we are stopping here for now is because I wanted to highlight the, the Publix grocery store. Um, this is a mixed use development with parking underneath. Um, it's got retail on the front facing South Boulevard, which is a major thoroughfare on the other side of us here. Um, when this came in, it was the first major grocery store um, for this, all this new South End development. Um, and there was some unintended consequences of that. So there's a lot of density on that side of the tracks and a grocery store that everybody wants to get to on this side of the tracks. Um, this is also the longest stretch uh, between um, street crossings and light rail stops pretty much on the whole system through South End. And so what started to happen almost immediately was people from the apartments here jumping the fence with groceries to go back and forth. Um, the city and the transit agency have since started to plan for a new transit station right here for the light rail. Um, and it'll obviously include a, a pet and bike crossing. But um, again, I think a lot of this was just the city learning about where that demand's gonna be, how best the rail trail serves the demand, where the crossing points need to be. Um, it, it took a while to figure out this whole story that, that this really should be another transit station and obviously that's a really complicated thing to figure out the engineering of that and the rail operations, much, much easier said than done. Um, but come back and visit us in a few years because there'll be another transit stop right here. Um, hopefully the rail trail will continue that. The reason the rail trail doesn't continue there is because that's a property that hasn't been redeveloped in the last 20 years or so. When properties redevelop along the rail trail now, the city has amended its code requirements so that this is considered a main street frontage and buildings have to address the rail trail like they would a main street. Um, they also have to dedicate and construct the rail trail along this frontage, which 
to be honest, has not been a super hard sell for most of these developers because again, it's such an incredible amenity um, for their tenants and their residents. There is a transportation master plan. There's also a rail trail master plan that was developed largely by Charlotte Center City Partners and um, Charlotte DOT. I'm trying to think when that rail trail master plan was done. I don't know the specific year. It's it's within the last five, five or six years, I believe. Um, but it, it calls for filling in these gaps through a combination of public investment and, and private redevelopment. So I hear you saying that that developer, when they develop that land down there, if he was crazy enough to say he didn't want to help this trail, he doesn't have that option. Correct. The trail is going through there. Yeah. Correct. That's a requirement of, of any new development. Um, there's trade-offs to that, too, in the developer's favor. When, the, when those code requirements were amended, the density you're allowed to develop at is way, way higher than it used to be. So, um, I mean, it's it's sort of a win all around. The, there's, you know, more square footage that you're able to lease and, and sell, and um, the city gets this continuation of a great transportation amenity. Kevin is an architect. You work more on the development side of things than, than I have. You, maybe you have some interesting perspective on that. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the one of the things that really helped this is, and you can see right here, this is the connection for emergency vehicles to get back to the street, that this almost accidental infrastructure for, I think, FEMA maybe, it was an emergency kind of situation, really helped this area for sure, um, and did create momentum and, and made a nice space that developers could kind of interact with. Uh, a lot of these lessons are being taken to north of town where this same rail is going between Center City and University. So um, a lot of these lessons are kind of being brought to that part of town. Um, but I think, you know, the parks, the kind of pocket parks and all those things have been really helpful um, as well to make this a space. And it has become so successful that it really isn't a bike infrastructure as much anymore. It is a part of the community, yeah. uh, which is uh, which has definitely been nice. Um, I think one thing we'll see in, in a few minutes, a lot of these new buildings have displaced, you know, restaurants and shops and things that are a part of the community. And that is a, a part of developing is making sure that those folks can stay in the community that they help to build. And so I think that's a big part of the development, making sure that the small companies can still kind of exist with some of the bigger infrastructure. And really that's what people want, right? They want it to feel unique and a part of the, the local community. And, you know, making sure that those places can stay is super important to keeping that kind of feel of the community. Yeah. Just to reiterate a good point Kevin made, the, the rail trail really is the front porch for South End now. I think there was a period of time where it was kind of the primary bike route, but it's if you come back at six o'clock this evening, you'll see how packed it is. Um, or on a nice Saturday, there's no one is moving quickly on a bike or a scooter on the rail trail anymore, <laughs> which I think is a good thing. I mean, it's Are they walking on bike. You can you can ride. You just can't ride quickly. quickly. Yeah. There are a lot of patios and things, so there's a lot of, of uh, reasons to kind of go slow through and, there. And you've indicated sure. they're developing parallel streets for the serious cyclists. There, yeah, there are. There's um, so South Boulevard right now is not a great cycling environment, but um, there was a corridor study done a few years back for what it would take to try to improve the cycling environment on South Boulevard. Um, there's a, a bike boulevard parallel route that's it's a little bit more circuitous than South Boulevard, but on the west side of the tracks that folks can use. And then Camden, which we'll ride, is really the, the primary bike route now through, um, through that part of South End. Scott, I noticed the uh, tower with the, the, the Lowe's, Lowe's emblem on it. Um, are we also seeing more uh, businesses wanting to be in this uh, zip code right next to the trail? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the... I, I wish I had the numbers at my fingertips, but the economic development side of this story is pretty incredible. This has been one of the hottest markets in the Southeast um, for the last decade, um, largely because of the light rail and the rail trail and the value that, that companies and um, folks moving to Charlotte are seeing in those investments. But my brother who sells products to Lowe's indicates that that building's primarily for IT and they need to attract young people to IT, and the young people want this kind of environment. That's what I've heard, is that true? 
I think that's true. Okay. Yeah, I don't, the, the Lowe's corporate headquarters is um, north of town about 20, 25 miles. Um, I believe this is their IT center. Yeah. yeah.